Welcome to the Business and Brews podcast, where our mission is to highlight local businesses in the Triangle area and shed light on different industries. All right, so welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am not sure (laughs) if we're live everywhere or not. Facebook has been uh, giving me attitude here for the last little bit, but uh, sorry about the interruption. We had a little uh, sound problem, Uh, but once again, I am here with... uh, Randy of Oak City Sunless. Randy, I'm super excited about this. I appreciate you being so patient with me, uh, figuring all this stuff out. But uh, yeah, so um, I I want to just dive into it again because uh, we were we were on a roll, and you were telling me uh, the great story of how you got started. And so um, you know, just for anyone who's maybe catching on for the first time now if you would really quick just uh just tell us who you are and and what you do yeah absolutely so again my name is randy i own oak city based here in raleigh north carolina uh we service the entire triangle area so raleigh durham chapel hill and all the outskirts i haven't had a location that i've said no to so what i mean by that is that we actually own a it's a concierge spray tan company so we bring the spray tan to you in your home your office your hotel, if you're somebody who's traveling through the area, wherever it is that you'd like to get spray tan. Uh, it makes it convenient for you. You don't have to like plan your time around it, whatever you need done. Nice. That's awesome. Um, so I know we talked about this before, but that, right? <laughs> what's, yeah. what's that? I said, you look like you had a thought. You had a light bulb oh, out yeah. there in the middle of that. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought it was interesting how you brought up the uh, the people traveling in hotels and stuff like that. That's pretty pretty exciting. Uh, so yeah, I, I know quite we... a few to hotels. To be entirely honest, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so I know uh, we talked about this before, but you said um, you said that uh, uh, you've been mobile all twelve years. So um, just tell us again, real quick, like. Correct. Kind of, kind of what led you into the business? Yeah, absolutely. So about seven years ago, um, when I was in college, I started working in a tanning salon because I wanted free tanning like we all did back in the day. Um, I actually ended up working for the company for about six years. Fell in love with the industry. I worked for some amazing ownership up in um, up the Buffalo, New York area, no Bills, and ended up loving the industry. Um, it was never designed to be a full-time thing. Um, ended up moving down to Raleigh. Actually, the, well, I was in Rochester at the time, Rochester and Buffalo. I was going to school for massage therapy and um, intended, intention was to open a massage therapy with business. And I had to write a business plan. And that business plan, 100% doing it mobile. I did that because I lived in a small farming community and I knew the benefits of massage therapy. And there are so many people who needed this work done, but they were never in years going to go to Rochester, Buffalo and step foot into a, a spa. They, they were spa type people. And I'm talking for farmers, uh, a huge dairy farm community. I was physically needed what I and they were never going to go into a spa with the, the bubbling water in the corner and the, the essential oils burning. They just, they're, they're the manly men and they just weren't going to do it. But so my entire business plan was doing a, mo- a mobile massage therapy business. So a couple years later, I graduated that and I'm down here to Raleigh. Love it here. It's amazing. And I was like, oh, you know, I'll find a part-time tanning job because again, free tan doesn't want that. So as I was doing again, good old Craigslist, Craigslist was the thing to do and it wasn't scary back then. Well, at least it was. Um, I went to Craigslist and I was looking for a job and ended up finding a company who was selling the materials to do at home mobile tanning. Um, it was sent in a machine and a couple of bottles and they gave me a DVD and said, go oh, have at it. Uh, I was confident in what I've learned over the years of the tanning salon that I could do it. I knew the industry was going to be big eventually. It was the next up and coming thing in that that niche. So I bought the, I practiced on my friends and uh, that was in 2009 and here we are. So the company did start under a different name just because it was based upon where I lived up in the, um, and I was always doing it. I always had a full-time job, always worked for a corporate job because it was just, it's nervous to go off and start your own business and to jump into something. And I think anyone in any, any entrepreneur, any business owner can attest to that. We didn't all just like wake up one day and said, I'm quitting my job and doing this. It takes time and it takes balls. <laughs> you gotta, it's nervous. So uh, I probably could have done it a few years ago, but last year was actually the first year I, I took the business full time. 
Uh, nice. And I probably could have done it a couple of years since now. I was probably working two full time jobs without realizing it, working my day job and doing this at nights and weekends and twining them all. And it was, it was crazy. But uh, <laughs> last year I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I did it. And then COVID happened, which was an ironic twist of 2020, but still worked out fantastic. Um, branded the company in 2018 to Oak City Sunless just because I realized here everything is so city oriented, which anyone from here can see everything is Raleigh, Durham. Like, so I got Oak City Sunless. Uh, I do like the Bull City Sunless. Uh, so eventually when I want to expand more into Durham, I do service Durham, but kind of focus marketing that way. I'll kind of go that way too. But so the past two years has been Oak City everything, Oak City life. And it's been fantastic. Like I absolutely love doing it. Amazing people in the process of it. Um, I can't wait to do more of it and expose more people to it. That's why I'm here. This is obviously is an industry that everyone thinks is for them. But even if you don't spray tan, you know somebody who does. Even if you don't know it, you know somebody who does. So yeah just just not not something that uh before I, I met you i would necessarily discuss and i'm willing to bet especially me being uh, a veteran and most of my friends being veterans that some of them may not admit to it but you're probably right <laughs> exactly i would i would guarantee you're 100 percent right so that's the one thing about tanning which i see in the industry for myself uh, doing it for so long and you know i'm very involved in the Industries itself. I know spray tan all over the world. We have our, our Facebook forums and our groups, and we're like, it's a small industry in a tight niche. But the one thing we all can't really understand is why spray tanning is so taboo. People don't like to admit that they got a spray tan. They're going to get pedicures and manicures. I'm talking men too. You know, it's not just, but they're going to get their hair dyed, eyelashes. I have them too, you know, but they will, they're all good to that. But ask if they got a spray tan. They're like, no. like they're, they're like terrified of it. I don't even say that they got it or that it happened or. What could go wrong? It's crazy. And I blame the media for that. I do. I love them. But man, like, they gave us some bad, like a Ross from Friends. We've all yeah. seen the episode. We all know what we're talking about. Like in my, in my frequently asked questions that I send to clients, the last one is, will I look like Ross from Friends? Because I can't tell you how many people ask me that question, especially <laughs> new tanners, because there is a lot of people who haven't done this. I get so many new people every month and I love it because I'm happy to educate and show them like, listen, it's not going to be bad. You're not going to be orange. Like, Oh, the episode just crushed us. And there's there's a lot of bad things about spray tanning in the media because it's funny and it's an easy jab. I get it, but everything can go wrong, <laughs> you know? But yeah. yeah, tanning and tanning is what you are right. Like there, there's more, and even, you know, to get more men do it, to realize I do lots of, you know, I'll go over and I'll spray tan the wife and the girlfriend and the, the husband will ever be there. And I was like, oh, it looks kind of nice. Oh, I'm sick of looking tasty next to her. Can you spray tan me too? It happens when I get there sometimes. Like last minute they think about it. There's, I'm not going to make them look crazy. I'm not going to make them look something that was completely abnormal. Literally just a day at the beach. Like you go out and sit in the sun anyways. Like, what's, yeah. what's the deal? Like, you know, it's really so we want. I'm trying to break. I'm trying to get past that mold of letting people understand. Like, it's okay. Nobody's judging you. They're going to like honestly give you five when they find out that you did it. So. Yeah, so I, I know, Randy, that you have a, a pretty pretty awesome website because I, I went to it. Uh, that's that's where I got some of the info. Like I dropped your you. your website in the description of this video. So if y'all are watching live and you want to, you know, go ahead and uh, check check out Randy and, and Oak City Sunless, then um, definitely just click in the, the link below. But um, I, my question, Randy, is on the website uh do number one do you have like uh some type of education as it relates to sunless tanning what it is how it works and stuff like that and number two are people actually able to book their appointments online or do they have to call or email you that is a great question and i get that often so on the website, I do have uh, a little bit of information. I don't want people to go to the website and think they've gotten everything because I still like to have that personalization conversation to face because there's still so much more information that they're going to get from me than I can even, you know, have to type up in a, you know, four pages in the website. But there is uh, frequently asked questions on there. So if you have some basic questions, you can go and check them out as well as our pre and post care instructions. So if you're somebody who's considering getting a spray tan, you're like, oh, well, I was told I can't shower for 24 hours. You're going to go to my website and realize that for what I do, what I use, that's not true. If you're like, mm. oh, well, can I get a new tan? Well, I have to go get my, you know, a pedicure. Can I do that? My website's going to tell you if you can or can't do it. You shouldn't do it. Cans not work. But all the, some basic information is there to kind of lead you in the right way. Um, in regards to booking, I don't offer online booking. And once I explain why, it makes total sense. 
um, it's not going to be easy for us. So the logistics of what we do is going to be impossible because we serve such a large area. Traffic. Um, I know a lot of people work from home, but I'm out there every day. Traffic is still terrible here. <laughs> it's still it's, uh, times of the day are different. Um, the clients I know take longer than the next. Uh, if I have a chance to client, I'm going to make sure I book a time with her. Then I book with the next client who's in and out in 50 minutes. So it, it kind of varies. So unfortunately, we don't offer online booking, but it's super easy. You can message us uh, through the website. There is a contact form. Put it in. Sends an email. Get right back to you. I try rather quickly. Typically, get back to you within a couple hours. And usually, if I didn't, it's literally just because I'm out driving doing tans. Or I, sometimes I have a life outside of tans, but yeah, tanning life is fine. So um, you can message us through social media, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Both are at um, Oak City Sunless. Super simple. We're going to get back to you. There's myself. I say we because there's myself and I have my assistant Crystal. So one of us will always reach back to somebody rather quickly. That's awesome. Um, so. You know, you talked a little bit now about, uh, Randy, you going out and, you know, um, doing doing the actual tanning with your clients. Uh, so is it, is it just you? Uh, I know you mentioned an assistant. Do you have other people that do it as well? Uh, it's just the two of us. So um, myself, I do most tans. And Crystal, uh, my assistant, she, I brought her on last year. And then again, COVID. So it's been kind of hit or miss. But. In the fall, when we kind of start picking back up again, she does tans as well, too. So depending on, you know, obviously, I can only do so much as one person, and I want business to be more. So I have her on, and of course, as business grows, I'll bring in more people as me. So, But right now, uh, we spray tan seven days a week. Um, our availability is pretty flexible. I say we spray tan 10 to 10. I've done them earlier, and I've done them later. But, you know, I, I, and I've had days in the business where I'm tanning 12 hours a day. So, right, again, so logistically speaking, like, Sometimes it, it may be less tans in those bigger days, but I also, you know, I have a regular client who I love out in Evans. I know I'm in, I'm in Central Raleigh. I did that for a reason because everywhere I have clients out in Clayton. These places are 45 minutes away. I plan accordingly. I, I, I have no problem going out there. Sometimes it takes a chunk of time and kind of cuts in the day a little bit. So there's there's days where I have 12 hours of tanning where I start in the morning and I'm tanning all day long. So wow, I love it. <laughs> <It's great. laughs> yeah. Hard, hard work. That, that sounds awesome. I like it. So I know, uh, Randy, a couple of times you've brought up COVID. So I, I know that was a little bit challenging for everyone. Um, so how how did it affect your business and what are some things you did to kind of work through the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing for us was just the unknown. Um, you know, I have a lot of friends in the beauty who own businesses here in Raleigh. And I'm going to, for example, I'll talk about like a hair salon. Uh, one of my friends owns Tone Hair Salon here, and we knew it was going to be busy. We knew for a fact that when they opened back up, people were begging to get their hair done because they have their hair done. But Tanya wasn't so sure. I have a great client list. I have loyal clients. But I just didn't really know what to expect because no matter what, we are still an events-oriented business. People get spray tan for something. I do have a lot of lifestyle tanners who get them every week, every two weeks just to be tan. But, you know, if people aren't going on vacation, if there isn't weddings, if there isn't and anything that they need to wear a dress or skirt, they want tan legs. Uh, you know, it was cool. since those things weren't potentially going to happen anytime in the near future, I didn't know what to expect. So uh, I did mention, um, so I did work in the corporate world. February of 2020, I told them uh, my leave was going to be April 1st. <laughs> and then, you know, the next month or so was crazy when we started coming in and realized, you know, April 1st we around, I couldn't do tans. Like, we were shut down for two months. Uh, obviously, we, unfortunately, we're not essential. You know, ask us, we're essential. Ask my clients, we're essential. But I get it. It's fine. Not, not about it. That so we were shut down for the first two months. And I was like, huh, what do I do now? Um, I tried not to get overwhelmed by it. I just, I didn't want to think ahead because then nobody knew how long it was going to look. So, um, I really started focusing on selling retail products that I've always had retail. So like, obviously I do the chance like I want to put the product on you, but I've always had, <clears throat> sorry, voice is cracking. I've always had uh, like self tanning mousse. I always have that. I've always had, uh, you know, gradual tanners and all these things that people could do at home. I just, um, because I'm mobile, it's not like I have a shelf. You're not walking into my salon and my products on the shelf. So I was always kind of terrible at explaining that I had that. So it kind of like forced my hand to do better, to be better about that, to, to start promoting these at-home spray tan kits. Uh, or not really spray tan, but these at-home tanning kits. And I ended up going crazy and kind of opened my eyes to that. It actually was good for me because I ended up doing that and I'm shipping these kits all over the United States. I, 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 you forget how powerful social media is sometimes. I do. I, 
I think because I've just been with it since the beginning and realized how big it is. I mean, I'm, I'm just one person here in Raleigh posting about my product on Facebook. And next thing I know, I'm getting order crazy and I'm shipping them to all these different states because people wanted tans and they, they wanted it out there. So I was doing that for two months. Um, and again, just taking a day to day, I took uh, advantage of my time because time is like I was used to having. Working full time, I was working my corporate job 60 hours a week if not more mentally putting into it on top of Phyllis in. And this was a full-time job too. I treated it like one. I was intermingling it. So when I had the time for those two months, almost like a shell shock, I was like, what do I do? But I, I worked on my marketing um, at, at the same time. Actually, this is the thing we're going to bring up. We were nominated for uh, Best Breaking of the Triangle by Indie Week, Indie Week's uh, event on. So I really took advantage of marketing that. Um, I sent out, I've had these postcards for years. I've had these postcards to send to my clients. And I just never had the time to like, and just, they're just random. They're just like, hey, how are you? I miss you. Like checking in, like everybody likes to get mail that isn't a bill. I get it. I want to be the person yeah. that wants to send it to you and just whatever. Even a client, even I saw you yesterday, I'm going to send you something. So I had the time to do that. It was, it was kind of nice, kind of nice to do these things and check things off my list that I need to do um, and just kind of wait. Unfortunately, it was a waiting game. We just didn't know really what to expect. So those two months, I did a lot of that. I just kind of realize how much more I could do, how much more I was capable of and kind of getting myself set up. And finally we were able to open back up in May and it was like <laughs> uh, that first day in May when I go back up, I think at 5 p.m. we're lunging things. I had nine clients that night. I was like, please come over. I don't know if it's because they were just felt pale. I don't know if they wanted someone in their house who wasn't somebody they lived with. I'm not really sure what it was, but I'm eternally grateful for all of them and because it's been amazing. It ended up being one of my like being my best year yet even being shut down for two months and the support and just like feeling it from everybody and it's really great and, and we ended up winning best strangle best spray strangle too which was great because there's a lot of great spray tanners here that's a fact there's a nice. lot of great women in this area of businesses who offer tanning so just being yeah. nominated first and foremost and was great and then i ended up winning which is like oh my god you know 2020 is it was just the kind of icing on the cake for everything that's awesome that's awesome. Uh, it, it sounds like even though you yeah. kind of got the the hurdles thrown your way, that you were still able to overcome those. Um, so, so Randy, uh, you yeah, know, ba basically, uh, it, um, you know, I I hear how you got started and you know how you worked through this pandemic, but I'm definitely curious because you mentioned a little bit about Durham before, but what what is like your long-term goal with this whole mm -hmm. thing? Yeah. I mean, eventually um, I'd like to bring out, it is the industry itself is still small because there is people who haven't done it. And there's some people out there who consider it it's still growing aside from me. So for the area, I mean, I'm, I, th I think I'm the only full-time spray tanner now. A lot of girls who spray tan who do other stuff in the beauty industry. It's like a side hustle, which I did that for years. I get it. And uh, I think I'm the only full-time spray tanner. So like I, you know, when I decided to dance, I didn't want somebody else. Like, you know, I've always done this city folks, obviously. Uh, Durham, everything's bulls there. So I didn't want somebody else to come and be like, oh, I'm going to go off of that. I don't want somebody coming and bake up my work. So I bought the rights to bull city sunless. It's obviously there. Uh, potentially, you know, Chapel Hill, it, it could get into Charlotte at some point. I mean, it'd be great to just keep on growing and expanding. But right now, I mean, with Raleigh, there's so much potential here. Obviously, we see the growth of the population that's coming in here. Um, I'm really trying not to get overwhelmed with the thought of it all. <laughs> so, um, five years, I'd absolutely like to have a team of girls working for me. Girls or guys, it doesn't matter who it is, but uh, I'd like to have a team of spray tanners that kind of go out there and, and do it for me. And um, you know, marketing, um, this is the first year I've ever done any sort of like marketing. I've always just been word of mouth, which I'm so, again, thankful for this year, really focusing on and there letting people know what it is we do, why we do it, how we do it and why it's, why it shouldn't be taboo. Why, why are we not talking about it? It's, it's okay to get straight hands. So oh, people do. <laughs> so, but if you are nervous about it, I'm going to do it at your home. So you don't have to feel nervous about it. <laughs> so, nice. That's awesome. Walk into a salon. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, so well, normally, I try to overwhelmed it. Literally, day to day. Yeah. So normally, uh, around this time, we would uh, field questions. Obviously, uh, I, I had trouble with the audio, so I don't have uh, 
the chats up in front of me but if if we field those so if you guys have any questions i i know we're not live on facebook because of the hiccup but obviously this uh the recorded version will premiere there as well as everywhere else so uh, if anyone has any questions for randy feel free to reach out to me of course uh you can contact her on her website once again in the description um but uh, now we're going to transition into the segment, uh, the questions we've had brewing. Uh, so, Randy, um, the first one I want to ask, because you kind of touched on this before, is uh, when you're not busy running around tanning 12 hours per day, what do you like to do for fun? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I can honestly say it's like, what don't I like to do? Um I hate, I hate to keep it, but um, I'm, a, I'm an extrovert, if you couldn't tell. Um, that's probably why I do so good in this business. I like to do, like to do all the things. So um, I miss festivals. I, I can't, I hate not having festivals. I live music. I love live music. Um, I like to travel. It's one thing I love about the Raleigh, Durham area living here is that I can get so many amazing places in just a few hours. So, uh, you know, go to the beach, go to the mountains. Um, just to, just for something different. I have a dog. If anyone has a dog, really, they're time consuming, and I treat her like my child. I'm not like a crazy dog mom, but I'm also like I'm, I'm close to it. I'm up there, so. But you know, just go to the dog park. Um, there's actually a great dog park up in Franklin. It's like a privately owned one. You can take him up there, let him run around. I am from New York, so I uh, used to go to New York like once or twice a year. Beautiful in the summer. Don't go in the winter, but uh, you know, we used to go to hockey games. Love hockey. Canes fan. Um, used to go to hockey games we get a drive shack i mean i love raleigh like i i want to go out we used to go out and experience other things great food here love breweries of course trophy brewing going right here a <laughs> trophy so um you know i, I i'm out i'm a I'm a, person, a woman of the world <laughs> i would go out and do everything i possibly could i mean i would i would travel i went you know last year I went to vegas before everything got crazy uh i used to well, i was in india the year before that you know so yeah that's awesome i'm i'm the same netflix, way i like netflix to be is my new hobby. I think it's yeah <laughs> everybody uh everybody like us that are extroverts are like what do we do oh, we're cooped up <laughs> like yeah we get out <laughs> oh it's gonna be crazy yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like i don't i don't know what to do with myself i mean it's, it's just so weird like like i talked earlier about having all this free time and not knowing what to do with myself like that was just because I'm not, you know, I got, I ended my corporate job, which took a lot of time. So I was kind of prepared to have a little bit of free time. I was looking forward to it. Well, then COVID happened. I, I mean, it was all at once. I had like all the free time. I'm like, yeah. I don't understand what I'm supposed to do with myself. Like, I mean, there's things like, COVID, but I, I don't know. It was, it was weird. It was a weird dynamic for somebody who's been on the go and had like, you know, three, four jobs or jobs of some sort to do. And all of a sudden I had nothing to do because yeah. it all happened at once. It was interesting if for as you said if you're an extrovert you understand you're like i don't understand like every day i'm like we need something in the grocery store i'll go where are we gonna go i'll go get it like it was, uh, it's been rough but i miss doing all the things that is for sure so, i mean right now i think we're doing everybody else we watch a lot of netflix <laughs> like you know i grocery shop probably way too much um like i said <laughs> tonight, you know, do the lows and all that stuff but i miss yeah. the entertainment aspect of the world that's for sure i miss i miss not thinking about going to do something so yeah so totally we'll get there yeah we'll get back there eventually <laughs> yeah definitely uh so uh the next question um is a little bit deep uh so if you haven't seen other episodes uh you can take a second to think about this one but if you could have a beer with anyone dead or alive who would it be and why a thousand percent my grandfather when he was a beer drinker the man never not had a beer in his hand I could talk about his choice of beer. It was a cool light. Like, it was terrible. I'm like, you know, you drink good beer. Um, he was just a phenomenal person. He passed away just a couple years ago. But oh. every day, man, there's something I want to tell man. I want to call him up. I want to tell him what's happening. Um, I, I, want, I want to know his opinion about what's happening in the world. Like, he's the only person's opinion I actually cared about. So uh, I would drink a beer with that man every day for the rest of my life and eternity if I could. So that's yeah. easy one for me. Yeah. N nice. Was, that's awesome. I him. It's, it's, it's like hardest thing. Everyone loves him. Don't get me wrong. But man, this man was just like, he was just a ball buster and he was a nails and, you know, he, he really just pushed you to be a better person. He was just, he was phenomenal and stubborn and just great and, and all the weird ways. 
place. Like I look one day uh, when we were growing up, my, my parents bought their house and we all lived together with my grandparents. And I look out my front window, uh, my grandfather's on his pillows, two cases in front of it, driving down the road. And I was like, what are you doing? He said, go to the neighbors, I'll be back. Like he would just like hop on the four wheeler and like drive down the road and like deliver beer to the neighbors. Just like yeah, country life, I guess. But it was just better. He was a great man. So that's Clay awesome. would definitely be my choice of person to drink a beer with for sure. Yeah. That's the better one. <laughs> Oftentimes we ask people that yeah. question. And yeah. uh, we threw them for a loop because they weren't prepared for it. But you, without a doubt, had an answer right away. <laughs> so that was that was no awesome. And there's uh, all, you know, because I think, especially people, I think people overthink anything. They want to think it has to be like somebody famous or something like you know. Yeah, there's a, a probably amazing people, but nah, you'd be my beer drinker. Yeah, definitely. Not a problem at all. So. I like it. So, uh, you know, of course, uh, there's all different kinds of content in today's world, Randy. So, you know, books, podcasts, YouTube, uh, stuff like that. So I'm curious whether it's for entertainment, professional development or whatever, what, what content are you consuming right now? Um, man, it's a question just based upon the state the past couple weeks <laughs> so or the past couple months let's not lie um kind of way, so weirdly enough i've never been a youtube person um i don't know why i've never gotten on the board and people are like you need to watch youtube I'm like i don't i think it's maybe it's so large i wouldn't even know what to watch i don't even know i just i don't i don't youtube uh instagram uh facebook i've kind of geared away from i think facebook's just there's so much going on and it's, i don't know i, I kind of stick to instagram mostly these days uh, TikTok, it's so addicting, not gonna lie, I'm that person. I didn't, I didn't really know what it was or started it, you turn it on, you're like, this is amazing, and you realize how much more it is than what, you know, it's not 12-year-old girls just doing TikTok dances, but it's actually turned into a pretty amazing and uh, informational platform, and sometimes you're like, why is it on the internet, but you're gonna get that anywhere, but that's, that's quite the entertaining one, on entertainment 60 seconds. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, uh, I try to stick to the peace, the peaceful mind stuff. And Instagram's just got some pretty pictures for the most part. So try Definitely. to stick to that in my own happy little bubble and stay informed as best as I can, but not you know down the the rabbit hole of whatever I view. So yeah. people have a opinionated on Instagram too. <laughs> So not, they can't be quite free. Hey, everyone's out to title their opinions. I'll have your opinions. I don't care. I just, you know, sometimes I just get overwhelmed and don't want to read them. So. Yeah, definitely. For your dog. I'm happy. Happy. Thanks. I'm a, yeah. I'm a sucker for a good podcast or, uh, or a good audio book. And today I found a podcast, uh, by a buddy of mine, Dan, I'm not sure how to say his last name. I think it's Warhide, but it's uh, Pro Growth VA, um, and apparently he's like okay. a marketing guru. But he, it was cool because it's a brand new podcast. So I got to listen to episode one. Uh, there's not a ton of episodes out. I listened to episode one, and he was basically talking about how. Uh, he's kind of opposite of me, so he hesitates to put out content and is a little bit of a perfectionist, whereas I'm a guy who just goes and does and just kind of learns by, by failing, so to speak. Exactly. And uh, what's that? Uh -huh. so you, just, you just put it out there. Like, you're yeah. going to put it out there, you know, throw it to the wall, see if it sticks. Yeah, I, I mean, the audio problems we had at the beginning are a perfect example because I'm more willing to just stumble along the way than I yeah. am, you know, waiting till I have it figured out. Because this, I yeah. mean, going live is, is hard enough. Like, how can you really test that until you're actually live? Uh, but he put out his podcast. So I actually got to listen to, I think, two or three episodes today. And uh, it was really good information because... He just has guests on and interviews them. I mean, kind of like we're doing right now. And uh, they've all got really good stories. So I was pretty excited. Uh, I just learned about that podcast today. And then uh, I think he's going to have me on as a guest. So like a podcast guy interviewing a podcast nice. guy. Yeah, it'll be fun. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> That's how you learn, right? That's why I, I link with other spray tanners because 
that's where you're going to learn from the best. You know what I mean? Or incur there. Cause you know, you could talk to me about podcasting all day long. I'm like, I don't know you. I don't know. I don't know what to do, you know, but you, know, you never yeah. know. So you should link up with other podcasters. So weirdly enough, you say about podcasting and, and books like audio. I, I want to get more into like listening to podcasts. I think there's such great information out there, but myself, I start zoning out the minute. Like I've tried books on tape, especially when I used to like travel back and forth to New York. I zone out so bad. Like I'm just off in like wild land. And then I really didn't hear anything. So sometimes yeah. like visual stimulation, I realize more than just the audio, but there is no, great definitely. podcasts out there. People swear by them and, and it, again, no different than like, all walks of life, whatever there. I just, I can't like, it has to be in front of me. I, I can't just sit there and like, listen to what's in my ears. Even when I'm at home, I'll have the TV on. I'm like, yeah. oh God, I'm I'm like, didn't you just watch? I'm really watching it. Like, I'm doing 17 other things. Like, it's just kind of yeah. like background <laughs> noise. Like, I, I can't really, I don't know. So, I feel like I like podcasts are the same. Not so much podcasts. I feel like because, like, the, the conversation back and forth, or if there's more than one person, it helps. But, yeah, books, yeah. Oof, those are rough. Can't. Can't. My, my brain's just got 3,000 things going on. I feel things you. happening. It's just it, it's not working for me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, last question, and, and probably uh, the books on tape cause... yeah. Uh, last question, probably uh, the most important one, Randy. Um, I know we have your website in the description, but uh, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Where can people find you? Uh, yeah, so you can go through the website, which is uh, list dot com. Very simple. There's a contact form on there our phone on there phone number is also super simple and fun it's 844 spray tn you can get that wrong um and of course social media check everything comes to my phone everything you know but it's, it's the digital age it's amazing so whether you however you send me a message it's going to come right there you can also text our phone number people don't realize that the 844 spray tn it does accept text so some people don't, aren't phone people they have phone anxiety they're not sure what to do you can send us a text send us a message through social media on uh, instagram facebook send me a message i'm gonna get it and i'm gonna respond whether it's with questions or appointments or you're not sure how it works or i often get um again a question we touched earlier so like how do i book with you just send me a message like look at the calendar and go from there but find me i'll get you totally i love it well randy uh thanks so much for being here now we're gonna move into the after brews which is basically uh, uh an additional short segment where we just kind of relax talk about whatever you want to talk about um but it is not live it is only recorded so if you are watching us live right now and you want to hear uh all about the nitty-gritty of sunless uh tanning or whatever randy and i choose to talk about during the after brews then you're gonna gonna have to tune in on wednesday which is when the after brews gets released so randy uh, i just want to thank you once again for being so patient with me and for uh for hopping on this zoom call yeah no problem thanks for having me happy to be yeah. here absolutely so y'all uh join us on wednesday